YouTube. We are in the bakery right now, can I get you anything? Alright, I'm on my way home, but I will talk about all the changes in this rolling update starting with the challenge mode. I will also not explain stuff that do not e need explanation or that are minor, right? Keep in mind that some of those things that we are going to talk about were already put in the game a couple of days ago. This change log specifies only what changed between this update and the last one. So the way it works, every time someone commits on their repo, it is instantly put into the game. I don't think that's the best way to go about it, since the change can appear to be very sudden, like the one we experienced with the berry update six days ago. They should roll all the changes at once and let us know in advance if those features are planned to be implemented, like some forms of patch notes, right? Before all the rules are put in. That's just my two cents, but let's get in. Okay, let's start with the challenge mode. It has been added into the game. It is a new mode available with two new modifiers that you can apply. Challenge yourself to only use Pokemon of a specific type or generation or both of them together. With this update comes 27 new achievements. That's a lot of grinding, but remember, that we have the achievement store that's coming in the future update too. So get those farming, it is not that hard to do because most of the time you can rush them with legendaries and stuff like this. But it's up to you how you clear them anyways. Now let's talk about those restrictions. If you are choosing to go for like a type only, let's say for example you go for normal only, you can only use normal types, which means that if you capture other type Pokemon, you can have them in your team, but you cannot use them in combat. This means that if you capture a Pokemon from one type and if he gets the normal type in the later evolution, for example, you should be able to use it in your team, but not until it evolves into that specific type. For the second one, if you are choosing to go for Gen 2 only, you can capture other Gen Pokemon and you can have them in your team, but you cannot use them in combat. So there is actually some issues with those, uh, those challenges. The only big one that I can see right now is that if you evolve a Pokemon from one generation to another, the game crashes and you are literally softlocked. You need to restart your run. For example, if I evolve my Sneasel from Gen 2 into Weavile from Gen 4, my run is basically over because I can't use that Pokemon or the game just bugs out. This also means that if you choose to go for Gen 4 only, you cannot play with Weavile since the starter is in Gen 2. Same for Gen 1, you cannot use Clefairy and company because they have no egg moves or reduction. I mean, you can, but you should not use them because they are very expensive for not a lot of things, to be fair. And if you choose to go for a baby form in Gen 2, for example, right, you cannot evolve them in their evolution in Gen 1 because of the Gen restriction. For example, if you use Togepi and you want to have the last evolution of Togepi in Gen 4, you cannot do it. You cannot play it, right? You cannot play this Pokemon at all. You can only play the baby and if the BB evolves, it doesn't work anymore. All right? I mean, you can get the second evolution, Togekis um, or Togetic, I don't remember the name, but you cannot get the final evolution because it is a different generation. I believe that you should be able to choose something like Sneasel or Togepi if you're going for a Gen 4 only because their final evolution is in the fourth generation. Now, again, I don't know how this, this is going to work, but let me know what you think. So some runs like Gen 4 are going to be extremely boring because there is a lot of evolution from Gen 2, Gen 1, or Gen 3, right? That's how it works. And another thing, but forms are available, so you can G-Max and Mega Evolve. Plus, if you go into a Gen-only run, so you will meet the Elite 4 of that specific generation. So if you play Gen 1 only, you will meet the Generation 1 Elite 4. Now let's talk about the berry change. So this is a change that came like a couple of days ago, six or seven days ago after the, the endless update, right? So Lum, Lepa, Citrus and Enigma counts are going down to two. All others will be going to three and berry pouches are going to be changed from 100% at the cap to 90%. This effectively makes fight easier since the AI had bad habit of carrying like five Citrus or five Lumberries most of the time at the end for classic and actually way more in endless. This also means that if you are playing a build that relies on berries like Metal Burst or Stored Power or something like this, you are going to have to micromanage your berries a lot more. Next, we have the endless tokens tweaked. This change is something that was made following the berry change. So sleep and freeze tokens are removed. Recovery tokens were changed. It goes from 30% at full stack to 20%. That's way better for Metal Burst and all of those things. 
Status conditions have been nerfed with paralyzed tokens specifically changed from 10% to 2.5% to proc and burn slash poison change from 10% to 5% chance to proc. And your tokens change from 2.5% to prudent to 2% for a 25% cap down to 20%. And finally, we have the status yield tokens change from 10% to proc down to 2.5%. So those changes are going to be very helpful for the first like 1000 floors and every floors after 3000, where people play either Metal Burst or Dots. It is not going to change a lot for teams between 1000 and 3000, since you should be outleveling and outspeeding the enemy every time. Of course, you have those uh, recovery tokens, those Angel tokens, sorry. Um, so even if the enemy survives and attacks second, you still have those Lumberries to remove those statues. Those are gonna be specifically for when you are not outspeeding every single Pokemon in the game, or if you are attacking second. Next, we have the Egg PT system. For rare, epic, and legendary eggs, if you have pulled 9, 59, or 412 eggs respectively, without one of those rarities, it will force your next common egg to be an egg in one of those tiers. And if you hatch 10 eggs in any given tier without getting a new Pokemon, it will try to force the 10th egg to be a new Pokemon from that tier. So if you are missing, for example, a very specific Paradox Pokemon in the in the epic egg family, you have more chance of getting that specific Pokemon for, for your 10th egg. Next, we have the arena flyout added. There is now a flyout that you can turn on or off in the settings. This flyout gives information about what's happening in the current fight. So by pressing V, you can now check out the enemy move set if you used the move before and how much PP there is left. You can also check any effect or time of day. Luck now affects wild Pokemon and counters. So luck increases the odds of seeing Pokemon from rarer tiers. Basically, luck reduces the limit of common rolls, making it easier to roll lower numbers for rarer encounters. This means you're gonna have less common encounters and more on the rarer side. Those are actually the numbers on the screen right now. So it's nothing insane, but there is definitely a noticeable change between having zero luck and having 14 luck points. Next, we have added move info display. So by hovering on a move in the starter menu, hovering in the memory mushroom, or by pressing C while selecting a TM, you get information about that specific move. It's pretty handy since you don't need to go on another website to check what the move does. Now we have the minor changes. So there is a couple of them that I'm not gonna explain because they are self-explanatory, but we have the champion teams updated. Some champions had their team changed to match the mainline games. There is a full list of the changes on the pull request, so feel free to check them yourself. I will put the link in the description. We have Punkaboo and Gourgai's forms added, so the small, big, medium, etc. etc. Second half of Fusion can now learn or remember evolution moves. For example, if you capture a Fusion with Greninja as the second Pokemon, you couldn't teach him his signature moves, like Water Shuriken, and now you can do it. Partner cosplay Pikachu and Eevee have custom moves and stats and they can now Gigantamax. There is actually a quick note about this one, there is a bug currently that makes that so if you revert them back to their normal form from Gigantamax, they will turn into their basic forms and not the cosplay ones. We have Sailor Trainers class added, more trainers, that's cool. Male Gardevoir and female Glalie that can now be found in the wild. Meloeta gender updated to match in-game. And we have more music added, so it adds more legendary battle music and music preference setting as well in the menu, just find them in game. Next we have implementations and fixes. I'm just gonna talk about the important one in my eyes, so I'm gonna put them all on the screen. We have more moves, abilities and items. For me, the only good thing about all of those are gonna be Curse, now makes 1 HP Pokemon faints, so for Sheninja specifically. Thunderclap no longer lets the AI read your move input. We have the Wide Lens is being moved from Rogue to Ultra Tier. So you probably noticed it by now, but it was changed from Red to Yellow. And we have Flame and Toxic Orb that have been added into the game, making probably the most disgusting broken meta today, which is Poison Hill and Sturdy with Metal Burst. Next, we have more bug fixes. So I'm gonna talk about only the one that I think is important, but they're gonna be all on the screen. 
So fixed confusion selfie chance being two, two third instead of one third. So this is actually better now. You have less chance to eating yourself. And finally, we have quality of life stuff. So we have more localization, always nice. We have an option to skip dialogue, good for speedrunners, more settings options. So they actually reworked the game settings menu. It's pretty cool. We have Pokemon info container now displays on top of battle UI. We have added time of day display. So it's in the arena flyout at the bottom left. Cursor automatically moves to start after party is full in starter select. Added switch slash set option. So this doesn't change anything besides removing the would you change for something else against wild Pokemon. It doesn't change anything for the mod against trainers in classic. Items are now sorted in summary in battle screen. You can quickly see what you're missing in the red tier or for berries. It is very useful. The money now has an animation on change. So it is a very distracting one to be honest. It's like red when you lose money and it's green when you gain money. And finally, we have trainer titles are now displayed in Vulture menu. So it shows what the trainer is in the Vulture menu. So if it's a champion, Elite 4 or Gym Leaders. Now on my Discord, I have the different uh, updates that are coming. So they are pushed on that same day and they are implemented directly. So for example, the time of day widget was added like two days ago and I just put it on my Discord. So if you want to track those updates, are they are committed inside GitHub, you can join my Discord. That's gonna be it for the updates. Let me know what you think about this specific update and I will see you in the next one. Bye.